what's up y'alls is how do uh let's see i am here to talk to you about jesus christ that's not true that's not true i'm here to talk to you about this i don't know why i said that about this week's new releases uh comics and comics uh there's some manga which are comics and there's some trade paperbacks which are comics and um some single issues which are comics and we're going to go over those things and then you are contractually obligated to come buy them from my store so if you're watching this you've already entered into a binding contract and i will see you here with your money to give me how's everybody doing um, what's up? Brian's over here. Hey, I'm Brian, over here. Brian, so I'm going to be open four days, no, four days a week. I'm going to be open seven days a week. <laughs> hey, there's Brian. Ah! Uh, it, oh, oh, he's gone. He dipped out into the void. He's always... <laughs> That's it. Hey, Kira. What's that? Why do you keep this void? <laughs> it's a terrible place to keep a void. Uh, hi, Kira and Mom. Hi, Kay Holden. That's my mom, everybody. Um, all right. Let's go through the stuff. I got my, my to-go coffee. I don't know if I said this on the live stream before, but I was pontificating about coffee and keeping it hot and how I cannot. So uh, very, very good friend, Kristen, mailed me a new coffee mug which is pretty stoked um molly hello how do everybody ready for book club tonight we're doing mr miracle from tom king brian hates tom king he has a personal vendetta against the man not so much for his writing but i think just a lot of uh stylistic choices that he has with his wardrobe um brian really goes above and beyond if he doesn't like your clothes uh, let's see. Oh, Molly says, hi, JD's mom. Kay, you have a pretty cool son. Good job. She also has a pretty cool grandson who she finally met yesterday. Um, is this slow to anybody else? I feel like on my end, it's very slow. Oh. Um, let me see if I shut down some, uh, what are these things called? Tabs. I got too many dang tabs open. Bear with me, or don't. Uh, close you down, close you down. Good doink, good doink, good doink. All right. Oh, my mom can't hear me. Can nobody hear me? Wait, she must, someone may, but must be able to hear me. They said hello to my mother. Um, how the hell do, hello, Mr. J. I'm doing great, action figure expert. How you doing? Matthew Feldman says, slow for sure. Dang it. Um, let me quit GarageBand. Molly can hear me. Thank God for Molly. Let's see, we'll close down Microsoft Word. Don't save. Kira said, we can hear you. I don't know if that is a, a pun because I'm using a, a cam. If so, I approve. If not, I do not approve. If you ever noticed, the chat has always been slow, like maybe a two-minute delay. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Why is this force quit? Garage band, get out of here. Force quit, Microsoft Word. Get out of here. There we go. Install updates later. Oh, no. I think I just told it to install updates. Well, that's not going to help. All right. Let's see. I'm on Firefox. Let's shut down Google Chrome. And my three billion tabs. And we will... Pause syncing for the Dropbox. Maybe that'll help. 
It's a little bit better. Chat is always a slow delay, but like you are moving fine. Oh, cool. All right, cool. Anyway, let's get started. Amazing Spider-Man, volume 11 of the current Nick Spencer run. It's the last remains storyline. With the introduction of a group of spider people that I hope um, get more get their own show. Or not show, but their own series. The Order of the Web. Because it's got Silk, Spider-Woman, Spider-Gwen, Miles Morales, Jessica Drew. The boys, dear Becky, the boys are back. And they're looking for trouble. Is that how the lyrics go? Um, so this series has been over for like a decade. But now because of the TV show... They have returned, and they've brought more of the boys. That's volume one. Well, I don't know if it's a volume one. I think it's the entire series of Dear Becky. Um, hi, Squib. Hi, Callie Grace. How's it going? I'm sorry, Callie Lev. Epic Collection Captain America, Captain America Lives Again by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. These, if you don't know, and you're all into old school Marvel... Their epic collections are pretty great. They're full color, really nice paper, and you get a whole big chunk of, chunk of comics. This is issues, uh, let's see, Strange Tales 114, plus Avengers number four, plus Tales of Suspense 58 through 96. So yeah, from the years uh, 63 to 67. All right, so there's those. Oh, here's one. Girl Splaining by Katya Klengel, a sorta memoir. Girl Splaining. Let's see. Oh, that's the back cover. Why do we fear the word vulva? Do we really have to be ashamed of our body hair? Why do gender roles in children's toys seem stuck in the 50s? In seven chapters full of wit and hard hitting wisdom, cartoonist Katya Klengel tackles the subjects that have shaped her life from body shaming to the exploration of her sexuality and from the representation of women in the media to the social pressures of women who don't have children. With a sense of humor, an open heart, and unsparing candor, Klingel looks back on her childhood through the lens of the popular culture that shaped her identity and examines what being a woman today means to her, and really, a whole lot of us. From Boom Studios, Girl Splaining. Oh, don't start, don't, don't restart my computer. And I'm getting a phone call. Thank you for calling Hero Complex. Can I help you? Do you have an appointment? It's a comic book store. Oh, that's okay. All right, bye-bye. We don't take appointments. Um, so, yeah, girls playing. Oh, my goodness. So, this is the style. It looks very cute. I like the style of it. So, yeah. Oh, hi, Alden. What's up? Hi, Kira. Hi, JD. Oh, Sid is squib. I thought Kira was calling me a squib. And I'm like, I can't tell if that's good or bad, but I'll take it. Um, Girl splaining. I remember seeing that in the preview, says Callie. Not that potato head. Potatoes are non-binary now. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are real upset about it. I keep seeing it online. I'm like, oh, the liberals are coming for our potatoes. Um, oh yeah, that's my girl, my copy of Girl Splaining. I ordered a couple of them. A couple people ordered it in Callie Grace Lev. So yeah. Also up, we have Immortal Hulk, the best horror comic of the year, um, by Al Ewing, Joe Bennett, Roy Jose, and Paul Mounts. So uh, this this run of the uh, Immortal Hulk has been very much about body horror. Oh, here you go. Gross. So very body horrorish. Um, so yeah, this has Immortal Hulk 1 through 10 and material from the Avengers 2016 number 684. So this has been really good. Oh, you know what else has been really good? Noel uh, had lent me his She-Hulk um, Omnibus from Dan Slott from 2004. And boy howdy, is that a bucket of fun. It, you know, it's its own standalone story. It doesn't have anything to do with... Like, I don't know, any of the big events that were going on at the time. It's just in its own little pocket. And, oh, man, it is really charming. I really like it. Have you read that, Brian? 
I have none. We'll get out of here. All right, My Hero Academia Team Up Missions, Volume 1. How much is the Immortal Hulk, asks Matthew Feldman. Do you know, Brian? Mm, somewhere between $20 and $75. Somewhere between $20 and $75, he, he wagers. <laughs> Thirty nine ninety nine. You you wager thirty nine ninety nine on your. On the twenty to seventy five dollars. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is thirty four ninety nine. Matthew Feldman. Um, let's see. We read the one issue from that. We did read it the was one. Really good. It was a good issue. Oh, are you talking about the King in Black Immortal Hulk? Yes. That was great. Yeah. Let's see. For some reason, Potato Head say seems more offensive. Right. <laughs> it's true. Forget his gender. He called him a Potato Head. That's rude. My Hero Academia Vigilantes, number nine. Little manga there. More manga. Shikamaru's story, Morning Clouds. Oh, it's a Naruto spin-off title. Um, Rise of Skywalker, graphic novel adaptation. For the little ones. For the younglings. If there's any left. I like the style of this. This is pretty cool. Wonder Cat Q-Chan. Story and art by Sasami Natori. Volume 1. Now that is adorable. Look at it. An adorable full-color manga about a young man who rescues a cat and the friendship that blossoms between them. Oh, please take me home. Take me home tonight. Transformers Secrets and Lies 84. So this is a prequel to the original Marvel Comics Transformers series that started in 1984. And they've gone back and they did a little prequel. Beloved original series writer Simon Furman returns, accompanied by artist Guido Guidi, I didn't, okay, to tell a new tale in the 1980s Transformers comics universe. What shocking revelations will forever change what we thought we knew of the classic 80s series? At least one, I'm assuming. All right. Oh, we got another Wonder Cat volume. Oh. Oh, speaking of epic collections from Marvel Comics, if you like the X-Men, The Fate of the Phoenix by Claremont and Byrne. One of the all-time favorite X-Men runs. And up oh, right there on the back, the greatest X-Men epic of all time. Man, what a good what a good time for X-Men. It's a little expository, as Chris Claremont is wont to engage in, but you know, it's the 80s, we can do. X-Men X of Swords, or Ten of Swords, actually, is how it's pronounced. Ten of Swords. And it's, this is not an omnibus for some stupid reason. Just call it an omnibus. This is Ten of Swords hardcover. Um, this is how many? Oh, good Lord. There's so many issues in here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 issues of X-Men through uh, the entire, what would you call it, catalog of X titles. <clears throat> so it's a big X-Men event that ran through all of the X-Men titles last year. And we have this beautiful bad boy, Mike Mignola, the quarantine sketchbook, big hardcover and you can see uh, Hellboy is there hanging out. He has stabbed a um, COVID. What is that? A COVID what? Uh, virus. Vi the vi he's <laughs> stabbed the virus. What is that? Yeah. Microbe? Microbe? No. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Is it a... Hmm. Hmm. He stabbed the virus is what we're saying. Uh, during the COVID-19 lockdown, legendary Hellboy creator Mike Mignola posted original pencil sketches online and auctioned off the art to raise money for Jose Andre's World Central Kitchen. The sketches went viral and were the talk of the comics internet. It's true. As a member of comics internet, I talked about it as well. 
So it's not Whistle and Dixie on that front. Now those sketches are published in print for the first time with all profits going to World Central Kitchen. This new oversized hardcover collected is a must have for Mignola readers and art fans alike. The book features an introduction by Christine Mignola alongside sketches of Hellboy, beloved and unexpected pop culture characters, macabre chess pieces, gothic vegetable creatures, strange vampires, and more. This looks dope AF. A Virion. Oh, it was Apparently. a vi Thank you. Brian has, has looked it up and he has... Hellboy has stabbed a a COVID micreon. Uh, virion. 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 I'm not 100% sure, now, but that looks like it. Well, Google never lies. Uh, <laughs> it is a COVID viral envelope, says Kira. Kira wins. Whoa, because she has more words? She has more words. It sounds better. All right. You just took the word virus and put virion on it. You sound like that manium. That's what I did. That's what I, that was my idea for what it should oh, be called. Oh, we can't get that. That uh, Let's call it unobtainium. <laughs> Jose Andres is great. Or Andre, says Kira. All right, so that box is done. Look at us. We're burning through it. Um, so Brian went through and organized the books. Sometimes upside down. There's a reason for that. <laughs> he says there's, he claims there's a reason. You see, comics are bigger on one side than they are the other, so to keep them in a, in a line, you flip them, you know. If he had a mic, I would mute him. <laughs> but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, I don't, and I don't pay you, so I can't fire you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming together for me. <laughs> It's all, it's all coming up, Lieb. All right. America Chavez, made in the USA. I am very excited for this, and I'll tell you why. She seems like a very cool character that I very much want to like, but hasn't had a ongoing series that has kept my attention. I like her when she shows up in other series, like um, The Ultimates and The Young Avengers, but I'm hoping this will be the one. America Chavez, made in the USA, by Kalinda Vasquez and Carlos Gomez. So, oh, and the art looks real nice. So, yeah, I will definitely check this out. And that's the main cover that I just showed you. And this is a alternate cover. And here is a second alternate cover. Yeah. Oh. Callie says, Yay! I have been waiting forever for that America Chavez series. It's true. Every month I look at my subscriptions and I, I try to, because it was supposed to come out a long time ago. And I go, poor Callie, where is this America Chavez book? Well, I'll tell you. It's here now. All right. Avenger. Ooh, these are... How has he done this? Here we go. Oh, I see. He's putting all the variants in front of the stack. I'm messing with my shit. I'm just teasing. Okay, here we go. Earth's Mightiest Heroes, The Avengers, number 43, Enter the Phoenix, part four. I'm a couple issues behind on this, but as a Jason Aaron fanboy, I am definitely going to catch up. Oh, Callie likes the main cover of America Chavez, so I will put, make sure to put your name on the main cover so you don't miss out. Callie. Doink. All right. Do, 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 do. Got a whole bunch of those. That's the main cover of the Avengers. By uh, Lionel Yu. Lee, Lionel? Lee, Li, Lionel? Yeah. And Jen Bartell has been doing, is doing uh, women's history variant covers. So this looks like very much in the style of like the 80s. 
fashion magazines. So that's kind of dope. Uh, there is a Timeless Alex Ross Vision cover. There is the Michael Cho variant of Ant-Man and the Wasp. And then there is a... Oh, what is this guy's name? Dustin Weaver, I think. I believe this is a Dustin Weaver variant cover for Avengers. And another Dustin Weaver character variant. Um, Callie says, can I get that She-Hulk? Maybe. I'll have to see if it's already spoken for. But let me see. If not, consider it yours. Boopa doopa, boopa doopa, doo. Boop doop. Oh, in case you're wondering about my earworm for the past two weeks, it's been Santa Baby, a classic Santa Claus song, because I now have a literal baby, and so every time something happens to the baby or with the baby or at the baby, I sing the baby a song. Um, poopy baby, why is it you got so much dang poop? Yeah, you know, it's I just kind of make it up as I go. But yeah, that song's always in my head now. Also sung by Eartha Kitt. Also sung by Eartha Kitt, says Brian. I'm, I, my first version was from Madonna. Hmm. The Madonna version. She was also uh, the one who uh, shepherded me into puberty. She took my hand and brought me kicking and screaming into puberty. Did she have one of those shepherd's crooks? Yes. That's yeah, cool. yeah. Just... <laughs> uh, all right. Next up is Bra Brazer. Crar, Bre Breeze, 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 Breeze Wrecker. He's the Breeze Wrecker. He, he will stagnate any room, even if there is a mild breeze. It's just immediately just, ugh. Everyone wants to leave the room. It's very moist. Uh, Berserker. This is Berserker by uh, Keanu Reeves and Matt Kint, Ron Garney, and Bill Crabtree. So yeah, with a cover by Raphael Grampa. So yeah, there's, there's Keanu Reeves. He's got his own comic book now. Let's see. Callie says, I love those Jen Bartel covers for International Women's Day. Molly says, Eartha Kitt is a dang gem. Do you concur? Yeah, I yeah. do concur. Yeah. Um, and then Callie, Gra <laughs> Callie Grace was... Making sure that I knew it was actually called Berserker. <laughs> Thank you, Callie. I like yours better. B Breeze Wrecker. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's another cover of Breeze Wrecker. Um, to get stuffy. In yeah. <laughs> Prepare to get stuffy. Um, oh God, dang. Uh, who's this by? This is this. I know this artist. This is. Um, oh God, who is that? I don't know. Uh, Anderson something, what is your name? Mark Brooks, it's Mark Brooks. And, all right. Santa baby, want you Tom inside my chimney tonight. Come on down my chimney tonight. Oh, I got a lot of, I hope people want, I really hope people want Breeze Wrecker because I got a bunch of copies of it. I really banked on this one. I, the name Keanu Reeves, I'm hoping will be a pull. Here's the blank blank variant cover. You can have your favorite artist, your favorite JD, draw on it if you like. Uh, here's a red blank cover. Is it blank if it's red? No, it's red. It's red. Here's a red <laughs> variant cover. Just a plain red variant cover. <laughs> Breeze wrecker. I'm so stupid. Um, Molly says, I mean, the word berserker means bear shirt. And bear shirts are probably pretty stinky. Berserker means bear shirt. Hmm. There, there was a there was a um, a comic book called the Shirtless Bear Fighter. I remember that. Remember that a couple yeah. years ago, yeah. Interesting. Justin says, "When is Keanu going to come out in Pog form?" If you buy ten copies of Breeze Wrecker number one, 
and send it in, they will send you a pog, a pog of, of Keanu Reeves. Uh, all right, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, number 23. Got a bunch of those. We have a second printing of Daredevil, number 26. And for anyone who doesn't know, Elektra is the new Daredevil. And this is a Ryan Stegman, Stegman cover. Uh, oh, this, oh, oh, this one's cool. This one's cool. Hold on a second. I'm excited about this one. This one just kind of came out of nowhere in the past maybe month. I didn't really know about it. And then it showed up to little to no fanfare, but I think this looks dope as heck. Let me find the main cover. Give me a second. Here we go. No, that's a variant. Never mind. Don't look at that. Hold on. Here we go. Peach Momoko's X-Men Demon Days. Look at this. This looks cool as hell. So that's the main cover. And here is the variant cover by Gurihiru. Oh, man, I can't wait to read this. This looks so cool. And here is another variant cover by Art Germ, Stanley Lau, Art Germ. And here's another Mark Brooks variant, this one for Demon Days. It just, man, so cool. This is like right up my alley. And then there's this variant cover by, oh, Lino Wu, again. And it is a widescreen variant cover. Yeah. I never saw one of those before. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. Uh, the first time I saw it was for an issue of X-Force drawn by Todd McFarlane, hmm. where Spider-Man goes up against the Juggernaut, and uh, I believe Juggernaut tries to bring down one of the Twin Towers. Oh. Yeah. Right. Brutal. Oh, I, 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 that sounds familiar. Yeah, and you read the whole thing, like, widescreen. Right, right. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Oh, I got to... Oh, too many comments. I got I to gotta go back. Uh, Molly says, yeah! It's a Viking thing where they thought that wearing bear shirts into battle gave them the bear's strength. That's where the Viking berserker warrior thing comes from. Oh, I didn't know that. They should have worn the muscles. They should have worn the muscle of the bear, yeah. not the, the <laughs> fluffy covering, the, the fluffy bear covering. Yeah. Uh, Noel says, dope as heck. That Demon Days cover is toy, says Callie. Peach Momoko is legit. Cody, Guri Hero, says Noel. Cody is our resident Guri Hero uh, fanatic. Um, Callie, do you want a Demon Days? Are you interested in that? Or are you just saying, it's toy? Uh, Matthew says, I would like a Demon Days, please. Main cover. All right, Matthew. Matty Felds. A boop a doop a scoodly doop. Boop doop. There we go. Um, Noel says, if there's a lineal U variant, I'm in. I mean, there literally is. I just showed it to you, but all right. Does he mean for any comic ever? Yeah, actually, Brian has a great question. Yeah. For your subscription, if there's a Lino U variant, do you want all Lino U variants? It's too late. It's on your subscription now. <laughs> you didn't you didn't get back to me quick enough. Uh, Noel said, called it. Noel, Demon Days, Lino U, please. May I have a Demon <laughs> Justin, may I have a Demon Days to buy? Yes, you may also have a Demon Days to buy. Um, Tobias Fionke. Um, Justin Agnew. You guys, we took our son up to see his grandmother last night. His grandmother's. Grandmama's. And boy, was that wonderful. What a nice night. My moms finally got to meet their grandchild, and it was just awesome. And it was for my birthday, so... They made me a uh, but like nine steaks. It was like, it was most of an animal. I'm assuming a cow, but I don't want to. 
I don't make any promises. Don't um, look a gift steak in the mouth. I would not look a gift steak in, a, in the mouth. <laughs> unless it's in my mouth. In, I will look at it mouth, in my yes. mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, with mashed potatoes and corn and then a, a tiramisu. Tir, tiramisu. Um, Callie. Yeah, I'll take a Demon Days if you have one. Main covered preferred for Callie Grace. Oh, I'm running out of Demon Days. <laughs> You don't want the Giru Guru Guri Hero? That one is awesome. Callie? I am shocked. I like that one. I'm not as shocked, but I like that one. Yeah. Brian has no emotional attachment to, to it whatsoever. Uh, in order I to really be shocked by it. didn't know what to expect yeah. from what she would like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wrote that before you said no. Shut the F up, Brian, says no. <laughs> so Brian, would you, like yes. to come, would you like to come over here and give him one of your fingers? One of his fingers? I'll, all right, I'll take it. Wait, what? Oh, wait. I thought you wanted you were inviting Noel to come No, I was here. saying, Brian, you can come over here and give him one of your fingers. You can pick one. Oh! It's that one. I did not see that coming. I thought for sure he was going to go for a thumb, which isn't a finger. <laughs> Don't look a milk steak in the mouth, says Noel. <laughs> I love that. That is such a good clip from that show. Um, it's always sunny. Oh, milk steak. Jelly beans? I'll break that G damn finger off, says Noel. No, my finger! <laughs> I needed to flip people off. <laughs> You've got another one. What about the doubles? Uh, you do you do double? Oh, the double flips. The double. That's true. Yeah, you got yeah. a double flip. What am I, British? <laughs> to a V? <laughs> uh, fear case number two from Matt Keent, co writer of Breeze. Breeze. What was it? I've already forgotten it. Breeze Wrecker. The Breeze Wrecker. <laughs> Fear case. Enemy of wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like the back cover too. That's kind of cool. Uh, fear case. I don't know what this is. Let's see. I want to see Breeze Record goes to Chicago. Yeah. The windy city. <laughs> the windy, yeah. He single handedly takes down the entire city. <laughs> um, you got two hands, you drama queen, says Noel. <laughs> Firepower number nine. This series is great. I love it. And uh, I love Chris Somney's artwork. And we're going to see a little bit more Chris Somney artwork a little later once I get to another book. Enemy of Wind, LOL. <laughs> Hellions number... Now, this is kind of neat. So Marvel, for some reason, for Hellions number 10, seems to be doing a throwback cover format, right? You got your... Title treatment, and then you've got your old-fashioned... Uh, what would you call this? Like the busts of people, kind of? Yeah, this... There is a name for it, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, this this thing that will go nameless. Something box? And then, yeah, there's a something box up here, yeah. and then there is a second something box Ooh. over here, where they used to... See, the, the second something box is for when they would have two versions of a comic book, one going to the direct market and one going to... Um, what like would you newsstand. call it? Newsstands and stuff. And so on the newsstands, there would be a uh, barcode. But then because they didn't have a barcode for the direct market, they would put a face in there. So they've done both here. They've got a barcode <laughs> and the something box of the second something box. Character box, mm -hmm. says Noel. Yeah. Dot, 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 question mark. Also, Hellions is great. Uh, I was not, I had no interest in Hellions, but I've read a couple of issues of it, and all of the characters are pieces of shit, and they're really snarky, and the writing is really snappy. I really am, I'm enjoying it. Um, Ian Fleming's James Bond, Agent of Spectre, number 001. Mm -hmm, you get it. Uh, by whomst? Whomst is this by? Is it Ian Fleming? Oh, Christo Scage, with art by Luca Casalanguida. So yeah, if, if James Bond is your jam, I have one copy of that. Ah, the aforementioned um, Chris Somney series is out. It looks to be all ages, and I think it's called jo Jonah and the Unpossible Monsters. So this is the same guy who's been drawing Firepower. He did an award-winning run on 
um, Black Widow with Mark Wade. He did a run on Daredevil with Mark Wade, and now he's doing a, a creator-owned Jonah and the Unpossible Monsters by Chris Somney and Laura Somney with art by Chris Somney. So yeah, that's the main cover. It looks adorable. It looks like something you would see on the, um, the Cartoon Network. And then here is an alternate cover by Mike. How do you say his name? Myhawk? Mihawk? So yeah, it's an alternate cover. Looks adorable as heck. Looks a little Steven Universe style in the art. A little bit. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, he says it looks a little Steven Universe-y in the art. Uh, Noel said, Jonah! <laughs> that was it. Does he know him? Jonah! <laughs> Is, is he a good friend of yours? Jonah! You were supposed to call me. Why didn't you call me? You left me sitting in that diner for 30 minutes. Uh, King in Black is still going strong with a new tie-in issue. King in Black, Captain America. I believe it's a one-shot. Brian, is it a one-shot? Uh, it gets either one or more. It's probably, oh, at the end it says the end, so we're going to say it's one. I, I would not have been sure if it said the end question, question mark. mark. <laughs> um, Noel says, you're a little Steeny, Steven University in the face, Brian. Do you mean that as a compliment? Yeah, is that good or bad? I can't tell. He wants to know if that's a compliment. Um, oh, so here is an alternate cover of that King in Black Captain America with Cap and Bucky. Right? Wait, am I looking at that right? Yes, Bucky. Who is this? See, the Bucky looks like Jackson Geis. Uh, it is a somebody named Geis. I thought Butch, but... Is it? Could be Jackson Geis. I didn't know that person. Butch Geis. Butch? Butch Geis. Yeah. Butch Geis and Jackson Geis are the same person. Oh. He just has a nickname. It's a cool cover. It is a cool cover. And then, ooh, Black History Month by Jen... Nope. Nope, not by Jen Bartel. By... Uh, Hernanda Souza? Maybe? Maybe? Yes. Hernanda Souza. And it's the Falcon. So Black History Month, Captain America, King in Black, number one. But you can see why I would say Jen Bartel. I could see that. He did. He saw it. <laughs> um, Noel says, it is Butch. Butch is Jackson. Jackson is Butch. I can't speak to the man's <laughs> masculinity. Captain America, King in Black, Mech Strike variant, where they're basically, I don't, I, listen, there's an Avengers Mech Strike miniseries out right now where there's Avengers who look like Transformers, but I haven't read it, so I don't know if they're like giant, well, it's called Mech Strike, so they're giant right. mecha, right? Are they in the mech suits? That's what I'm saying, I don't know. Ah. Who's remember to say? when Captain America had a suit like that? I do. In like the 90s or something. Oh so. my god. His, yeah. It was that armor? Yeah. It was Turned awful. Awful. Yeah. Um, Daredevil had a similar problem. Oh yeah. Yeah. Terrible armor. Runaways number 34 by Rainbow Rowell. Acclaimed YA writer. I believe LGBTQ writer. Rainbow Rowell. And this is Runaways number 34. I love when uh, they draw Wolverine with the correct stature. Oh, yeah. Everyone is taller than Wolverine. Um, all right. Noel, if there's a Jen Bartel Avengers variant available, please, for me and things, yay, fun times, THX. Was there a... I don't... We haven't gotten to the Avengers, have we? Oh, we did. Was there a Jen Bartel variant? There were a lot of variants. I don't know who did what. No, I got to backtrack. Let's see. Let's track it back. Uh, here we go. Regular cover, regular cover. Oh, sorry, Noel. Oh, you weren't here on time. So now it belongs to Callie Grace. Unless, wait a minute. Did you already sign up with your subscription for the Gen Partel? I don't think anybody did. So you might have missed out on this. I can see if I can get you another one. Let me make a note. Noel... Bartel variant issue 
43. Avengers 43. Hey, Brian. Hey. Can you check on the Diamond website and see if there is still that variant available for Noel? Let's see. Friend of the show, Noel. <laughs> Household named Noel. Oh, no box open. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, he's not going to like that joke. And then Callie says, oh, okay, so wait, okay, wait, too many. I got comments. Um, action figure expert says mechs are different than suits of armor. That's true. Well, they're giant suits of armor, right? Giant robots. Noel says, order me one. He didn't say please, you'll note it. Um, yeah, I would, I would expect no, no more from, from Noel. Uh, can I get the rest of the Jen Bartel I International Women's Day covers? Sure. Hello. Um, all right. Oh, I asked about it a bit ago, but we never put it down. Ooh. Oh. Whoops. Noel, is that the only International Woman's Day Jen Bartel variant that you want? Or you want all of them? Is it still available? It is still available. No, Brian says it's still available. Yay! So now we're waiting to see if Noel wants all of the... Jen Bartel variants or just the She-Hulk one? Oh, yeah. And then I will tell you, and you will make a note. Pretty please. Oh, and on the special orders list, can you write Cal Callie Grace, Jen Bartel, IWD covers, please? Yeah. Thank you. All right, let's move on. Speaking of King and Black, King and Black, Gwenham versus Carnage number three by Shannon McGuire. Oh, Noel says, are you ready? Yes. For Noel, he wants the Hellcat, Emma Frost, She-Hulk, and Ghost Rider. All right. Okay. Thank you, Brian. And then the King in Black Handbook comes out this week. Tells you everything you need to know about the King in Black. It's very much in line with the old um, Marvel Encyclopedia, John Skies. Who is the featured character for the Ghost Rider women's history? You know, I was going to ask the same question. <laughs> yeah. when, when Noel wrote he wanted the International Women's Day Ghost Rider variant, I was curious to see who the, the Ghost Rider would be. Hmm. I mean, there must be a lady Ghost Rider. Well, there's a long history of Ghost Riders. I yeah. can't think of any. Like, I don't know any by name. Yeah. Know, Ooh. But, hmm. My omnibus is falling over. There was a woman that was very important to Johnny Blaze, but I don't remember the circumstances of that. Uh, Noel says, thanks, Brian. You jerk. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. I thought you were going to do the finger again. And then, let's see what else we got. Oh, there is a lady ghost rider, says Justin Agnew. Thank you, Justin. What is her name? Do you remember? Lady ghost rider, Lady. Yeah. <laughs> um, King in Black Thunderbolts number three by Matt Rosenberg comes out. Oh, hey, Noel, we can't click links. I can see that you have posted a link, but it is not something I can click on, and it will... Not a hyperlink. Oh, Justin says Alejandra Joan. Jo huh. Joan singular? Well, that's her, is that her name? Joan singular. <laughs> All of the other people named Jones are yeah. plural people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she's the singular. <laughs> Alejandra. She sounds familiar. I want to say she's probably less than 10 years old. Hmm. I feel like they just did that recently. Um... Okay, King in Black, Wiccan and Hulkling one-shot. 
and it's got a wonderful cover, two wonderful covers by um, uh, oh gosh, what's his name? Mm, I don't know. Oh, I love him. I love him so much, and I can't think of his name. I don't know who that is. Jim, Jimmy, J uh, Jimmy, Smiths? Jimmy Smiths. <laughs> Um, Jimmy, James, Jim Chung, Jimmy right. Chung. So yeah, there's a great cover by Jimmy Chung. Uh, they have recently wed. So homophobes were real mad about that. They were, the homophobes were so invested in these characters already. Yeah. They, yeah. they were like, wait a minute, the Wiccan and Hulkling, my favorite two characters, got <laughs> right. married? It really impacted their lives. Now I'm angry. Yeah. Uh, and then this is another beautiful cover by Russell Dodderman. Looking all romantic and shit. Look at that. Also, look at that rumpus. Hulkling. Well, he can shapeshift. He's right? a shapeshifter. Right. So, yeah, man, he's going to give himself some rumpy dumps. Right. Why would a shapeshifter not have something yeah. like that? There's hey. a third cover, actually. Somebody requested it, so I set it aside. It's an oh. awesome looking cover. And so, this um, is a Peach Momoko variant. Very cool. Hmm. This is a Stormbreakers variant. I don't know why they call it that. Because the Stormbreakers, thank you for asking, Brian. Oh. The Stormbreakers in the Marvel Universe are new up-and-coming artists. Oh. So before it was like the Young Guns, pew pew, and now it's Stormbreakers for some reason. It's just a name they made up huh. to be like, this is our, these well, are our up-and-comers. Like when Beta Ray Bill got Stormbreaker after Thor got it, he was like that new Thor yeah. for a while. It's yeah. like that. There you go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, geez, I wonder if this is supposed to be cover price. Oh, did you tell him it was cover price? I did. Well, I asked you and you said yes. Yeah, all right, I guess it's cover price. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I looked it up online and everybody was selling it for around cover price. Oh, great, great. Yeah. Um, let's see. Alejandra Jones, whoops, Jones, she died in the last Carnage crossover event. Ooh, Wiccan and Hulkling says Noel. Noel, would you like a Wiccan and Hulkling? Yeah, I'm excited about this. They're a cute couple. I like them a lot. Marvel action, Captain Marvel, number one, co-starring Spider-Gwen, or Ghost Spider, Spider-Woman. I'm not sure what they call her right now. Let's see what they say. Let's see. Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, Chewy, a.k.a. Chewbacca Sassy Danvers, Jessica Drew, a.k.a. Spider-Woman, uh-huh, uh-huh, Gwen Stacy, a.k.a. Ghost Spider. There we go. So she's still the ghost spider. Still doesn't make any sense. Is that an actual kind of spider, I guess? Maybe. Yeah. But, like, if you're going to call anyone a ghost spider, it should be Miles Morales because he can actually turn invisible. That's a good point. But she is white in her costume. She, just like ghosts Just like do. ghosts do. Just, just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Shit. Oh, we do have fun. <laughs> Ah, all my, all my books. Ah, come on. Boy, I should have put some of these in upside down. <laughs> but not all of them. Not all of them. Then he does the same problem them. on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> um, damn it, Brian, please put Noel down for all of the Women's History Month Bartel covers. Is that Noel saying that or somebody Noel. else? <laughs> Noel is telling you uh -huh. to put him down all of for all of the Women's History Month Bartel covers. Done. He, he did not say please, but I will add in the please. Right. And I said done, even though I haven't done it yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Noel says, yes, Daughterman, if possible, Wiccan and Hulkling. Okay, Daughterman, Wiccan and Hulkling variant cover. Screedle-deedle, a deedle-dee-dee. dee doo God, that's pretty. That is such a good cover. Let's look at it again. I love this cover. It's so rare that you see two men in such a loving, romantic position. Embrace. It's so sweet. I love it so much. Uh, let's see. So I'm writing this one down for Newell. Boink. All right. It's, it's yours, buddy. And All right. So there is a new series from Scott Snyder and Tony S. Daniel called Noctera. And boy, the 90s called. 
I didn't pick up though, because it's. I was like an entire decade is calling my phone. I'm not even. I'm not even have time to worry about this. I'm sure they had something to say, but I don't know what it was. Knock Terra from Scott Snyder and Tony S. Daniel. Were you? No. Where were you that morning? It asks on the back. Let's see. Does it tell us anything? Literally anything? Nope. Okay. It's just a. You start right with the book. Definitely going to read it, and we're going to be talking about it, I'm sure, on the podcast this Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m., where we live stream the weekly comic book reviews. Uh, here is a variant cover by Capullo, Greg Capullo. Uh, oh, Noel said please. Consider it done. Yeah. I in, done. in the future. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then this is a cover by, oh, this is Jock, definitely Jock. That's a cool cover. And then there is another variant by someone I don't know. Someone who does digital art. I believe it's Art Germ. Is this Art Germ? Yeah. Nope. It's Boss Logic. Boss, ah, that's what it was. Boss Logic. I knew it was an Art Germ, but I didn't know that it was Boss Logic. Ah, but now... Now I know it's... Know. And now I know both of those facts. <laughs> and then, Noel, there is a blank variant. Giggle, 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 giggle. Noctera needs more brooding. Matthew Feldman, Noctera. It's permanently night. If you are in the night too long, you become a monster. You have to figure out how to keep the light on. Oh. Thank you. Hmm. So yeah, Noctera, Noctera. Thank you, Matthew Feldman. Oh, Noel wants the blanky boy. So, Noel, we got you down for Noctera blank. Dope. Ooh, the mailman's here. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. No I in team, says Matthew Feldman. Teamwork, thank you, buddy. Overwatch Tracer London Calling, number four of five. Wow, Mariko Tamaki did this? And Babs Tar. Shoot, that's kind of cool. Next up, we have Power Pack number four, part of the Outlawed storyline. That's going through Champions, Miles Morales, Miss Marvel, and Power Pack. Uh, Rick and Morty presents Jer Jerry Bory. And then Rick and Morty, Worlds Apart. And then, oh... The variant cover for Runaways. Here we go. So there's, we showed you Runaways 34 earlier, but then here is the variant cover. Why did you text me about Runaways yesterday? I don't think I did. You didn't? I don't think so. Cool. <laughs> Just Wiccan, uh, Wiccan and Hulkling. Oh, all right. Star Wars The High Republic I'm all in on this High Republic stuff from Star Wars. I read the first novel, The Light of the Jedi. I really enjoyed that. It was much darker and kind of badass than I thought it would be. And so far, the comics are just fine. But I have a feeling they're going to get better. It's, you know, it's all introductions, right? Bye, Callie. Love you, friend. So, yeah, that's the main High Republic comic book. And then there's the High Republic Adventures which is a slightly YA version of The High Republic. But to be honest, I read the first issue, and it just seems like regular comics. It's not particularly youthful in its presentation. Even the art style doesn't seem like a YA book. Transformers Beast Wars from number two. I remember being so mad when this first came out as a cartoon because I was so used to the Transformers Generation 1 
And then I was like, what's this Beast Wars bull pucky? Did you come around on it? Never. Oh, no. Never came around on it. Ooh. Undone by Blood or The Other Side of Eden. Did anyone watch The Nick? You ever watch The Nick? I haven't. Oh, it's great. The, was it the Knickerbocker Hospital in, oh. like, late 1800s, 1900s New York, New York City? It's awesome. Clive Owen? It's really, really good. The guy who played Doctor Doom in that Fantastic Four movie, I think, was one of the doctors in that? Uh, no, that was Nip Tuck. There you go. Sorry. Nip Tuck. Yeah. Nip Tuck. A lot of the same letters. Um, <laughs> the Walking Dead Deluxe Editions number 10. Oh, that's, I'm back on Walking Dead. I'm back to watching, I mean, I'm on season four or five, but I caught up, no, I went back to where I left off five years ago, <laughs> and I was, now I'm, I've watched a whole season in the last couple of days, I'm like, I just needed a little bit of me time, Yeah. and now I'm back to Walking Dead. It's awesome. You did that with The Flash just recently, too, It's right? true. Yeah. I do like to go back and finish up TV shows that I sort of left hanging. Uh, same thing with, uh, I want to go back and finish up. Hannibal. God, what a great show that was. All right, let's see. Noel says no. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> to what? Just a general no? No. no. Uh, he said no, and then the next comment is nip tuck. Nip tuck. There we there go. We go. <laughs> no. That two minute delay allows us to correct ourselves. But yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's diamonds. That's the diamond John skis. Um, let me take this minute to say that if you look on the YouTube channel, this morning I just posted a, after, oh my god, I recorded a thunder round last night. Thunder round. Thank you. And uh, for the DC Infinite Frontier number zero, and I spent a good two to three hours editing it, because I was trying some new techniques editing wise, and uh, at the end of it, I exported it, and it was bullshit. Uh, the, the, somehow it was all tainted and wrong, so... I had to start completely from scratch this morning. It was like 2 a.m. 2 a.m. that I finished up last night, and I was like, <sighs> done. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, so I gave up. And then this morning, I re-edited it and posted it. So if you're curious about Infinite Frontier number zero, I did a mostly spoiler-free review of it. I say mostly because there are some people who are like, Ah, you showed us one of the interior pages, and I see that there is a Green Lantern inside. Spoiler alert. I'm like, ah. Oh. I mean, how are those people watching reviews? Right. How many reviews do they watch that they don't have that complaint? Exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Anyway, you should check it out. No, I want your editing feedback. Watch the, the, my Thunder Round. Thunder Round. Uh, and let me know what you think. Uh, I was watching another video. It was a video review of... Thunder Round. Oh, no, sorry. no! <laughs> <laughs> You're only supposed to do that after I say the words Thunder Round. Thunder Round! <laughs> um, it was a video review of uh, Day Tripper, and the gentleman did a neat thing where, like, every time it looked like he had to edit, he just slightly zoomed in and out to make it look purposeful. Hmm. Like, ah, yes, I'm just zooming in. It's a different camera angle now, sort of. Hmm. So I tried that a little bit on the on my Thunder Round. So, thunder Round. So look at it and let me know what you think. Is it annoying? Did I overdo it? Did I underdo it? Matthew Feldman says, I would like Frontier Zero, please. Taking your advice to hop in here. Awesome. I literally clapped at a certain point in this book. I was by myself just reading it. And uh, I was so excited that I clapped and said, yes. The creators of the book couldn't hear you clap? Uh, nope. Oh. I, I did it pretty loud, though. Oh, they might have heard it. They might have. Was it like a Hulk style? Boom! You know, yeah. Like yeah. Devastation kind of clap. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, the building did fall down around me. Mm. <laughs> uh, all right. So where's my, oh, where's the DC books? Brian. 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 Oh wait, it's upside down. My mask is upside down. That's fine. Uh, don't exhale till you're over there. I'm exhaling now. All right. <laughs> Stand back. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. So, oh, this is also, there was a second printing of Amazing Spider-Man 58. I forgot to show that to you. I'm sorry. I'm a failure. And there was a variant cover of Gwenum versus Carnage, number three. 
I'm a double failure. But I seem to be failing upwards, so that's nice. Um, all right, so let's get started with Batman number 106 by James Tinney and the Fourth and Jorge Jimenez. Jorge Jimenez is just drawing the dickens of this book. It's just so goddamn good. Oh, I, I love it. I love his layouts. I love the texture that he puts into his work. Um, and not all of it is him. There's somebody else in here. Who's this? There's somebody not as good in here. Of my estimation. And then there's a, a variant cover, which is the Infinite Frontier variant. And it shows you the entire Bat family, of which there are many. Who's your favorite Bat Family member? Brian? Oh, Bruce. Bruce. Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne, he says. Get get he, this guy. He's the Batman. Br did, oh. you know, did you know that? Spoiler alert. See? A lot of people don't think he's so great until they know he's also Batman. <laughs> oh, he's Batman. I yeah, thought he yeah. was just a millionaire no, a, playboy a philanthropist. Playboy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, with a lot of STDs. He sleeps with so many women. Let's see. What's next? I'll tell you what. It's the Crime Syndicate, number one of six, which I am very excited about. Once again, we have a cover by Jimmy Chung, one of my favorites. And I, there's just something about the Crime Syndicate that I've always found fascinating. I love evil versions of the heroes. So anytime we have multiversal baddies, I'm into it. The first example that I can think of is Moriarty. Right? Oh. Sherlock Holmes, he's like all the powers of the hero, but not good. Oh. Yeah. Mine would be Satan. Well, yeah, does he have all the powers? <laughs> I don't <laughs> it know. It depends on how you think about it, it's right? True, right? Yeah, we could have a long conversation about that. Yeah. Uh, let's do that instead. Okay. Show's <laughs> over. Anyway, Jesus. <laughs> he always he comes back to Jesus. About Jesus. That's true. I started off the show <laughs> by being an idiot. Let's see. Um. Noel says, I didn't clap, but was happy for you when I read it. Thank you, Noel. It's so nice. Look at that. That's, that's friendship. Um, were it not early in the AM, I'd have messaged you about the Infinite Frontier Zero. You could do that now. It's Now it's late in the PM. Yeah. Well, where, well, I guess it's early in the PM. From, What's that? They could be texting from New Zealand or something. That's you know? true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, what made you get back into watching The Walking Dead, asks action figure expert. I'm not going to say who, but... When a few characters go away, you will not like it anymore. Hmm. Oh. Okay. What got me back into it is um, I was on Netflix, and then The Walking Dead came up. And I clicked on it. Because I was like, I haven't seen The Walking Dead in a while. Hmm. Let me dip back in and see... See them walk? You can see them walk. Yeah. yeah. So that feature on Netflix is working. Yeah. As they intended. It was one of those things, you know how it's like you know, revisit your shows or watch again or yeah. your list, whatever it was. And it was like, it was on there still from, I'd never taken it off my list. And I was like, oh shit, that show does exist. Mm -hmm. Also, a, a woman came in the other day and she bought, I have a Walking Dead cookbook, which is written by the woman, the actress who plays Carol in the show. Mm -hmm. And this uh, woman came in very nice and she was so excited about the cookbook that she picked it up immediately and bought it. And she's like, oh, tomorrow night, Walking Dead comes back. To which I said, the Walking Dead is still on? I did not know that. Um, so then, Kismet, hmm. that night, Walking Dead showed up on my Netflix, and I went, hmm. this lady seems really excited still. Boop, let's get back into it. And then I was I was immediately in. I was as if I had never left the show. Hmm. Not that I was on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you, you weren't? No. <laughs> um, Just behind the scenes? I was dick. Uh, Crime Syndicate number one variant cover. It's just fine. I'm not impressed. Was that rude? I mean, I wouldn't let the crime syndicate hear you say it. Ooh, the dude, they'll burn me alive. <laughs> uh, all right, so, oh, The Dreaming, Sandman Universe, The Dreaming, Waking Hours, ooh. number eight, by G. Willow Wilson. And Brian's over here going, ooh. I said, ooh. Ooh. Ooh, I said. Ooh, he says. I recommend that series highly. Uh, the art I've is really gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, Brian, in case you can't hear him, recommends it not at all. He says that the book is terrible, and anyone who reads it is an idiot. That sounds like me. Yeah. That sounds like the way that I talk. 
Uh, he says it's great and you should definitely read it. He recommends it highly. Yeah. The Dreaming Waking Hours. Like if you like the Sandman universe, it's a worthy entry, like really worthy entry in that. And if you just like fantasy. Well, wait a minute. Kind of if stuff, you if you already like the Sandman universe, do you need an entry? No, it is a worthy entry. Not not for you to enter, but like oh the oh, latest oh, entry. It is a great and I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I'm getting a phone call from Spam Risk. Ooh, what are they doing these yeah. days, Madam Risk? Thank you for calling Hero Complex, Spam Risk. Can I help you? <laughs> ah. I took a risk and I lost. You couldn't help it. No. Um, so that was going to be my question. With the dreaming, waking yeah. hours, do I need to know the Sandman history? Oh, that was going to be a thing that I said. No, uh, you don't. It's It really like takes place in a corner of it uh -huh. that if you already know, it's cool. But these are all brand new kind of things. Oh, great. Um, okay. A lot of Sandman is like that. Like A lot of the stories take place... In the periphery? In a, yeah, exactly. And and this is not, and G. Willow Wilson, always good. Um, oh, uh, let's see. Oh, so action figure expert, I hope that I answered your question. Uh, some of the certain actors leaving the show I've already known about, so I'm just waiting on it, but I'm, I'm enjoying it as it goes. Um, Noel says, PSA, if you pick up both Batman and Infinite Frontier number zero, read Infinite Frontier zero first. Hmm. Also consider picking both up for the whole picture. Sid says, they were just filming a new season of Walking Dead in Texas well before the snowstorm. All right. Is, aren't there, I keep seeing a promo for a Walking Dead something. Walking Dead subtitle. Um, it was like a prequel series. Right, there was the Fear of the Walking Dead, yeah, that's right. which is not this. I, oh. I know there's Fear of the Walking Dead, then there's the Walking Dead, but now there's Walking Dead something something. And I can't tell if... Something something is just the story within the main Walking Dead series, right. or if there's another Walking Dead series mm. titled something something. Keep walking. Keep walking, dead. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Infinite Frontier Zero comes out this week. Here is the wraparound cover. And basically, Wonder Woman, it picks off where Death Metal left off. Wonder Woman is elevating to her next status as, a, as an immortal being. And she goes through the DC universe with the Spectre and checks in with all of the DC heroes and where they're at. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of things in here that they tease that I'm very excited about. You should definitely read it if that is your thing. Uh, interesting thing happened today where, remember I told you how long it took me to edit this stupid video and I posted it. Within 27 seconds, someone had commented, Infinite Frontier sucks. Oh, they must have been waiting. Yeah. They were like, why is he so late? I want to yeah. tell him that it sucks. Didn't watch my video. My video is nine minutes long. <laughs> 27 seconds into uploading it, someone was like, it sucks. And I said, oh, why specifically? And then they never got back to me. Uh, let's see. Molly says, hmm. Hmm. You know what? I bet that's in reference to um, the dreaming white waking hours because oh, yeah. Molly loves Sandman. Oh, Molly, I highly, highly recommend it. It's yeah. the most, like, Sandman-ish series of the, you know, all of the other newer series yeah. uh, that I've read in years. Uh, since Lucifer, probably. Context clues. Let's see if I'm right. Let's see. Um, oh, and here's the variant cover for Infinite Frontier. And there's that's Wonder Woman's new look in this issue. Oh, that's it. Noel says, Walking Dead, World Beyond. It's on Shudder. It's a sequel series. Huh. Ah. Huh. So even though the main series isn't over, there's a sequel series? <laughs> All right. Uh, Matthew said, I saw that comment, too. The hmm was regarding the Sandman. Ah, yes. Nailed it. I'm the smartest man in the world. Do they want Shut one? up. Do they want one of those? Oh. <laughs> no, I, I'm sure Molly will want the trade paperback. Oh, here we go. How behind am I on the Sandman Dreaming? Like, where do I start on it? So there is the Sandman Dreaming main series that is... I haven't read that. Oh, uh, that's probably up in the 20s. Yeah. So, so we, we should do the trade paperbacks, Molly. But this particular series is a mini series that goes along with the dreaming, and this is called Waking Hours. And so this is, I want to say, six, eight, I believe. eight issues. Uh, I can see if the other ones are still available. Brian is going to see if the other seven issues are available, and if so, then we will get it. We will get you on it. Thank you, Brian. Sure. Brian's great. 
Man Bat number two, the first issue I liked very much came out last month, and then Man Bat number two versus Suicide Squad. Not a character I've ever cared about, but here we are. Sensational Wonder Woman number one, new series, starts this week, and there she is. Look how sensational she looks. kind of interesting. I don't know what's going on, but this actually looks kind of cool. Huh. Sensational Wonder Woman. And then after that, we... Oh, oh there, ooh, there's a variant cover by Art Germ. And then Suicide Squad. I'm very excited for Suicide Squad. Number one. New series starting this week. I'm so excited for the new Suicide Squad movie directed by James Gunn. James Gunn. It looks like not only are the other ones not available, even this issue is back ordered. Sorry, Molly. Yeah. I'll give you the trade paperback. Can you put Molly down for the waking hours trade paperback? Will do. Sounds good. If it's possible to get the issues, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'll wait for the trade paperback or omnibus. There we go. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. I like to eat PP peaches and cream, says action figure expert. I'll be honest, I don't have a retort to that. Here is the variant cover for Suicide Squad. Who's this guy? That is the peacekeeper. Peacemaker. Peace peacemaker. Sorry. Right? He's the inspiration for the comedian in Watchmen. What? Yeah. You know how... Oh, yeah. Was yeah, yeah. He was a Charlton character? Yeah. I did not know that. He was. Check out the big brain on Brian. <laughs> all right, Swamp Thing number one by Ram V. Looking all spooky as shit. Look at that. Gross. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. I like to eat pee pee, peaches, and cream. Uh, here's the very cover. Is he calling Mr. Sandman peaches and cream, or is that a list of things that he likes to eat? I'm not sure. Is it just pee pee that he eats? Or is it I like to eat pee, comma, Pee peaches and cream. Maybe after he eats pee, he pees peaches oh, and cream. I like to eat pee, pee peaches, peaches and, and cream. Yeah, pee peaches and cream. And then he must have left off what he does after that in his yeah, day. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, and then there's a trade <laughs> paperback. What an amazing reversal of the normal <laughs> process of digestion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Amethyst by Amy Reader. Written and drawn by Amy Reader. Mini series. I remember I read the first three or four issues of it and really liked it. Uh, you may want to check this out. Amethyst is a classic character, and now she's back. Brian, is that it? Uh, I think that's it. No, it's not. Well, Superman, it was. Superman Adventures, <laughs> Lex Luthor, Man of Metropolis. Oh, you know what's on Disney? No, not Disney Plus. Disney Plus. What's the other one? <laughs> Hulu, Netflix, <laughs> Apple Plus, no. uh, Amazon. Prime. HBO Max. Good HBO job, Brian. Max. HBO Max has. Um, <laughs> The Batman animated series. So I watched the first uh, the first episode of the animated series the other day. Um, also, Batman Brave and the Bold, which is a favorite of mine. Oh, I know. Yo, he loves that show. He keeps telling me about it, and I've yet to watch it. Yeah. Um, ooh, sounds good. Okay. Um, is that your new song for Kai? Yes. <laughs> HBO Max says no. <laughs> uh, I mean, that is kind of the other one. If you look at what Marvel and DC yeah. would be on what. That's what yeah. I was doing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so it was. It's, you know what, it's the special time of the Tuesday afternoon live stream wherein I eat a fortune cookie and I read you my fortune. You notice they're mostly proverbs in these days oh. and for some time. They, is oh. that how you do it? You don't break it apart first it and just, then pull it's, out the fortune? <laughs> it's a secret <laughs> message from my teeth. That's the, the tick. The Tick live action show. I laughed so hard when he did that. He spits out and he goes, ooh, it's a secret message from my teeth. You like participating in in, in um, competitive sports. Yeah, that's a fortune if I ever heard one. This is, without a doubt, the worst fortune I've ever eaten. You like participating in competitive sports? It's a description cookie. <laughs> Do 
You like participating <laughs> in competitive it's your sports. Personal qualities, Cookie. It may or may not be right. Cha please trade them until you find somebody yeah. that likes competitive sports. <laughs> oh shit. Um, boy, that, that has, there has never been a less true statement. <laughs> are there any numbers? Anything on the back? The numbers are. Oh, it says, how about another fortune? Well, not if, not based on this one. We didn't one. get a first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, secondfortune.com. Lucky numbers 44, 29, 17, 5, 30, and 31. Cool. I like how, like, don't people usually have a lucky number, not like six? Well, I, I think these are like for today or, you know, oh, okay. like, it's not your all-time lucky numbers. Okay. And if, I mean, why not have six? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Just peaches and cream, after correct, just peaches and cream, no. No, no, hmm. just peaches and cream, them, after correct, just peaches and cream, no. I think it's another song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, just peaches and cream, them, after correct, just peaches and cream, no. Yeah, I, I love it. It's yeah. a number one. <laughs> one of my one of my seven favorite <laughs> numbers. Uh, Chris Dunn says all of the Batman animated movies. Smiley face, fun late night watching with a baby. That's what I did. I stayed up and I watched um, the animated uh, first episode, and then I saw that they had. I think it was called the Batman. Oh, I like the Batman from like yeah. fifteen years ago. It was like much slicker. He's younger. He's yeah. got a, like a. A bat sig. What's that thing called? He had like a bat phone or cell phone. It was like a bat-shaped thing, oh. and it would like go <laughs> off and a alert lot of him. Stuff that he has. Is That's, just... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. The man doesn't own anything not yeah. bat-shaped. Yeah, even things that are impractical, yeah. or like bat-shaped toothbrush. Yeah. You know. <sighs> when they get to the other heroes in the Batman, it gets pretty good. Like as I recall, the Superman. Uh, oh yeah. And and Flash ones were really good. I remember liking how in the first season you follow this one officer, one oh, police yeah. officer, yeah, yeah. and then by the end he's become a character that you already know. Yeah, that was cool. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, a bat next tell. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> um, so anyway, I guess that's it, you guys. Um, I don't think there's anything else to show you. Uh, so I guess I'll go home and see my baby. And, oh, I guess we have to do the subscriptions, huh? Yeah, well, that's part of it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Noel, are you coming to do the subscriptions with Brian, or am I doing that? I forget. Did Noel, we... do you want those things that we said we would pull for you? Yeah, if you want that's those things, <laughs> you might want to show up and do pull. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. I'm done. I'm getting out of here. Hmm. I'm, so good. I'm so bad at goodbyes. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for hanging out. Don't forget, tonight is Book Club. We're going to be talking about Mr. Miracle at 8 p.m. Uh, if you need the Zoom link to hang out and chat about that book, which is amazing. Brian didn't love it, but everyone else does. Uh, we, we're going to be doing that tonight. And then Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m., we do the live stream spoiler alert podcast where we review the week's books. Also, like, subscribe, do all that stuff for our YouTube channel, The Cult Pop YouTube channel. Uh, we put up things called Thunder Rounds. Thunder Rounds. Where we do 60 second reviews that are usually about 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> it's and a that's series it. series of 60 second intervals. Yeah, that's right. One right after the next. Yeah. <laughs> Until you get about to about 9 or 10. Uh, I'm still at work, my dudes, says Noel. Oh, wait. Book club. There you go. Bye, friends, says Molly. Bye, guys. Love you. I will uh, see you on the flippity flop.